Hi everyone, today we're going to do a beginner CADIS question that involves bit manipulation. It is called reverse binary. You can find a link to the problem in the description. It has a difficulty rating of 1.4 which I found to be surprising because there are many trivial problems with a high rating. So maybe I'm missing something here. I guess this is an easy problem, but I want to show you how to do this one using bit operators in Java, which I think is a bit advanced. At least it's not something I expect students to know in their introductory programming course. Plus, you need to know how binary numbers work because that is what this problem is about. You see, your task is to reverse the binary representation of an integer. For example, if you're given 13, uh, its binary representation is 1101 and reversing that will give you 1011, which correspond to the number 11. So if you are given 13 as an input, you have to output 11. So you're going to be given a number in decimal, you have to work out its binary representation, and then you have to reverse that representation and work out what integer it corresponds to. This is not something that I can do at the top of my head. I mean, there's no way that I can work out that 47 is 61 when reverse. So I don't think this is a trivial problem at all. Now, because this is a beginner level video, I'm going to start with a refresher on binary numbers. So if you're already okay with binary numbers, you can probably just skip this part. On the other hand, I don't want to spend too much time on this. So if you have absolutely no idea on how binary numbers work, then I'm afraid you'll have to find some other resource to learn about it. There are a lot of great videos on YouTube on binary numbers, and I put a link to a couple of videos in the uh, description. So you can start with those videos. Okay, so binary numbers. Binary numbers are numbers in base two, meaning you only have zeros and ones and each digit corresponds to a power of 2. So if you have 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, then the rightmost bit corresponds to 2 power 0, which is 1. Then the next bit corresponds to 2 power 1, and then 2 power 2, and so on. So 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1 corresponds to the decimal number 49, which you get by adding all the powers of 2. Well, if the bit is 1. So if I give you a binary number, it's pretty easy to work out what the decimal number is. What about the other way around? Well, if you were to do this on paper, one way to do it is to work out the biggest power of 2 that can fit in the number. You know that binary representation is going to be a sum of powers of 2, so you can selectively add powers of 2 from the biggest one to the smallest one. If I want to make 47, for example, then I know 32 will go in there. Uh, but I can't use 16 because that will make 48, which is more than 47. I can put in 8, the next power of 2, to make 40. And in fact, to make 47, then I have to use the rest of the powers of 2. I have to use 4, 2, and 1. So that will give me exactly 47. So the binary representation of 47 is 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. We call this the left to right method because you work out the bits from the leftmost to the rightmost. However, when you're using a computer, this is actually not an easy thing to do. I mean, if I give you 47, how do you quickly determine that 32 is the biggest power of 2 that goes into it? So in fact, there is a much better algorithm and this is what we call the right to left method. You see, if you give me the number 47, I can easily work out what the rightmost bit is. Because 47 is a not number, its binary representation must end with 1, since the last bit corresponds to 2 power 0, which is 1. So how do I work out if a number is odd? Easy, we do 47 modulo 2. Therefore, modulo 2 will give me the rightmost bit of any decimal number. If it is an even number, we'll get a 0. What about the rest of the bits? Well, what happens if I divide 47 by 2? When you divide a binary number by 2, you're simply discarding the last bit. This is similar to what we do in base 10 with integer division. Uh, if you have a number, let's say 99, if you divide 99 by 10, what do you do? You discard the last digit. 99 divided by 10 is 9. So with binary numbers, you discard the last digit whenever you divide by 2. In the case of binary, it makes perfect sense why this works if you write out the sum we had earlier. You see, 47 is 32 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1. If you divide the whole thing by 2, the only thing that you can divide by 2 is 1. 
it's going to give you a half, which you're just going to discard. Um, the rest of the terms are multiples of two. So you're basically halving 47, and then you discard the remainder. And the sequence 10111 correspond to 23, as you can see here, right? So if you just ignore the, um, the last bit there. And to build up the binary representation from right to left, you continue this process. To work out the next bit, you do 23 modulo 2, that'll give you 1 again. To work out the next bit, you divide 23 by 2, which gives you 11. And again, you do uh, 11 modulo 2. And this is how you built the binary representation. You basically keep on going until the number becomes 0. So this is exactly what we're going to be doing to solve this problem. Let's say you're given an integer 47. First, we're going to work out the binary representation of 47, and then we're going to reverse it. And then from here, we work out what this binary sequence is, which in this case is 61. Okay, let's start the code. So I think the easiest way to do this question is to make a string corresponding to the binary representation of a number. So um, my input is going to be the integer n. So let's implement the algorithm that we discussed earlier. Um, I'm going to use a string. So let's call it string binary, which is empty. And as long as the number is bigger than zero, keep on going. What are we going to do? We're going to grab the last bit because that's what we can do easily. So we're going to do, um, hmm, let's say, if n percent 2 is 1. So if it's a not number, I'm going to append the bit 1 at the end. And every other bit I work out from there is going to be added to the left of what I have so far because we're going from right to left. So I'm going to write binary is equal to the character 1 plus whatever I, ha whatever I have so far. Okay, and if it's a zero, then I'm going to add um, zero to the sequence. Okay, so that will build me the binary re representation of the input. So let's just see if it actually works. Uh, binary, save, run it. Um, let's give it 47. Uh, oops, I forgot to do one thing very important. I need to make n smaller. So we do modulo 2, but I forgot to do n divided by 2. So the loop will not stop. Okay, so let's try that again. 47 gives you 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, which is what we want. Now, if I want to reverse the binary sequence, then I can reverse the string binary. There are ways to do that in Java, but we can do something easier. Well, you just have to flip this bit here. So instead of appending to the start of the string, you append to the end of the string, and that should reverse it. Okay, let's run again with 47. This will now give me 1101. Great, so now let's work out this number here. But here's the thing, um, if you try to work out the decimal number of 111101, then you have to multiply the last bit with uh, 2 power 0, then the second last bit with 2 power 1, and 2 power 2, and so on. So you have to work in reverse. Well, in fact, you can do the same thing with the sequence instead. So there's actually no need to reverse the string. I'll just keep it as it is. And then now I'm going to write a for loop that's going to go from 0 to um, the length of the string. So um, i less than binary dot length plus plus. I'm going to need a variable to store the current power of 2. So it's just called power. It's going to start 1 because that's 2 power 0. I'm going to need a variable to hold the answer. So let's call the answer. It's going to be 0. Now, what do we do? Uh, okay, so if binary char at i is equal to 1, that means I'm going to add the power of 2. I'm going to say that answer is equal to answer 
plus power. Then I have to increase the power of two. So I'll do power is equal to power times two because we're working on the next power of two. Um, and that should be it. That will give me the number. So I'm going to choose that to answer. Save that. Run it. Put in 47. I get 61. And put in 11. I get 13. And so on. So let's try to submit that. I hope it gets accepted. Um, it's going to be Java. I'm just going to zoom out a bit. Mm, it's going to be main. Paste. Okay, let's hope it works. Hmm. Okay, code accepted. So that code works. I hope the code is easy enough to follow. So this part here um, converts the decimal into a binary. And this part here goes from the binary to decimal. And I guess the irony here is that you don't have to reverse anything because, well, this is how we want to do it anyway. From when we have the binary representation, you actually want to evaluate it from right to left. So, well, we don't need to reverse the actual binary string. Okay, I'm now going to do this question again with a different approach. As I mentioned in the start of the video, I'm going to use bit manipulation in Java. So let's get rid of all this um, code. Um, we start fresh. Um, and I'm going to start by introducing a new operator. Well, maybe you already know it. Um, it's called the bit shift operator. So let's say I have the integer n. Uh, let's say n is 47. So this is your uh, bit representation. So remember earlier what I said about dividing by 2? Uh, if you divide by 2, you're simply removing the last bit. And that is the same as me shifting this um, this binary string to the right. So if I shift to the right, this bit here is going to disappear. And the operator to do that is the arrow arrow symbol. So I'm going to say n is equal to n shift by one to the right. Now, if I now output n and I input 47, this is going to shift 47 well, the bit anyway, to the right. So what will happen? You're going to get um, 47 divided by 2, 23, because you're missing the last bit now. Okay, so press enter, you get 23. So that is the right bit shift. And if you do the left bit shift, well, what do you do when you um, shift a decimal number to the left by one. So you have like um, 55 and then you shift to the left by one, you have to put a zero, right? So 55 becomes 550. In the case of binary, you shift something to the left, you multiply by two. So if you shift n to the left by one um, and n is 47, you're going to give 94. So all the bits is shifted to the left by one and you put a zero at the end. Okay, so that's how bit shift works. Uh, of course, if you shift more than once, let's say I shift to the right twice, that means I'm gonna have 47 divided by two and then divided by two again. So that's going to be 11, right? So that's basically 1011, which is 11. Um, you'll sometimes see it written um, like this. Right, uh, if you see error error equal to, um, a lot of people like to write it like that, um, just to show that it actually does work. Because that's the same with um, when you do the plus equal sign, right? So you can do n is equal to n plus one, or you can just write n plus equal one. So the same idea here, you can write um, n is equal to n shifted right by one, or well, two in this case, or you can just write n shifted right by two. Okay, before I write the code, I need to explain how exactly I'm going to do this. And I'm going to use an example for this, right? Um, so um, I want to reverse 101111. 
this time I'm not going to use any string, as in 10111 is actually the bit representation of an integer. So I'm just going to use the integer, right? Then I'm going to reverse its bit representation. Well, I'm going to like, I'm going to make a new integer that has the bit um, reverse, but there's no string involved here. And let me explain how I can do this using the uh, using bit manipulation. Okay, so obviously, if I want to reverse um, one zero one 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 one, then the the reverse is going to be um, one 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 zero one. So I need to move this one to the first um, bit of whatever the result is. So first, I need to be able to grab that. Well, I need to know what is the last bit. Is it a zero or is it a one? Um, and how can I do that? How can I grab the last bit of an integer? Well, there is an operation called n, which I hope you know. So if I do, well, um, you don't actually need the zeros there, but I just put it there to make it look nicer. If I do zero, 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 one, n this here that's a that's a bitwise n so you know that um one and one is one and zero and anything is going to give you zero so if i do one zero one 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 and zero 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 one i'm going to get one in other words i'm going to get the last bit and only the last bit if that was a zero i'll get a zero okay how do you do this in java well we use the n operator. So um, I'm going to say that let's say x is equal to n and 1, as in the number 1. The bit representation is just 1. So if I add with that, I'm going to get, well, let's put in 47. I'm getting 1. If I try that with, um, let's say, an even number, 8, for example, 8 is 1, 0, 0, 0. Um, 0 and 1 is going to be 0, I'm going to get 0. So that will give me the last bit of a number. So here is the process. Um, from this number, I'm going to do n1, which gives me the last bit. And once I've got that, I don't need this bit anymore, right? So what do I do? Well, I'm going to shift this to the right by 1. Um, and let me, um, I need to sort it somewhere. So let's say, um, well, let's build up here. So X is equal to one right now. Okay. Um, and then when I do, sh when I shift it right by one, um, the last bit disappears, right? So you have that. What do I do with this? How do I know that bit again? Well, easy. I just do N one again. Okay. Uh, but this time I'm going to append the 1 to this x, which means that this x here, I have to shift to the left by 1, and then I have to add, um, well, uh, x is going to become 10, right? Well, sorry, not 10, 1, 0. x is going to be 1, 0. And then I have to append this 1 to it. So how do I do that? Well, you do 10 or 1, because uh, zero or um, anything will become that. So zero or one will give you one. Zero or zero will give you zero. Okay. So um, if that bit doesn't make sense, just rewatch the video again. Uh, just rewind it a little bit. But the idea is I will extract the last bit using the end operator. Okay, and I can keep on extracting the last bit by moving the well the number I want to convert to right by one all the time. I should keep on shifting the right by one, so I'll work on a bit one by one, and then whatever bit I extract, right, I'm going to append to the answer, which is x, and I'm going to append using the or operation. Okay, um, let's give it a try. So. Um, I'm going to put the answer inside x. So when I first start off, um, x is going to be n, n1. So x is just going to be whatever 
the last bit of anise. And now we're going to have a while loop. Um, I'll, fill, I'll fill this in later. Okay. Um, what do we do inside, inside the while loop? All right, so inside the while loop, um, we have to get rid of the last bit of n. So how do I do that? Shift n by one to the right. Then I have to shift x to the left by one, right? Because we're going to append a bit to x. So the way to do that is by using the all operation. So I'm going to say x to the left by one. And then I'm going to to a pen, whatever bit, well, well, the last bit of n. So that's going to be x is equal to x or n and one. That should be it. Uh, well, you can write this differently as well. Uh, you can write um, this, yes, this should be equivalent, but I personally don't like this one, um, so I'm going to stick with um, the original line that I have here, but that should also work. Just like um, what I'm doing here. Actually, I don't really like... Uh, do I like this symbol? Do I like the separator like that? Yeah, this is the one that I actually do like because it's simpler than... Um, remember the alternative is this one. I can't prefer, um, I can't prefer the shorthand notation. So I'll keep it there. I know I'm not being consistent, but hey, that's me. Now, the last thing you have to worry about is when do you stop? So it might be tempting to say um, you stop when n is zero, so something like this. Um, but this will be wrong. Why? Because you have actually got the last bit of n inside the while loop here. Like, um, when n is actually equal to 1, you already got the last bit here. You already appended. So you actually have to stop. Well, well, when there's only one bit left, that's when you actually stop. Okay. Um, well, you can give it a try if you don't believe me. Um, um, you'll be doing it one extra time. So let's try this. Um, System.out print line x I'm going to run it let's give it um, what's the number again 47 and it gives me 61 run the game with 13 if she gives you 11 so why don't we try to submit this um, code um, so see um, see how much shorter this code is compared to this one and it's actually a lot more uh, efficient because I'm not making any strings at all. You see, with this approach, uh, each character is one byte, whereas in this one, well, you're only using uh, a four-byte integer. I mean, uh, I'm just I'm just flipping the um, the bits in the integer using uh, bit operations. Okay, so let's try to submit this again. Um, okay, switch to editor. Let's copy that, call it main, hope it works. Yep, got accepted. So there you go, that's an introduction to bit manipulation in Java. Um, let's do this one more time. Well, I'll just give a um, brief overview on how this was done. Again, let's say, for example, that um, you trying to reverse um, one, one, oh, sorry, what was the number? One, zero, one, one, one. Okay, so this is what you're trying to reverse. Let me make that bigger. So this is what you're trying to reverse. So that is N, right? That is N. So when you do N, N, one, you are grabbing the last, um, you are grabbing the last bit. So at this point, X is just one. Okay, and when you do n shifted right by one, you are discarding the last bit because that's what sh that's what shifting does. Now, at the same time, you're going to shift x to the left by one, which means you are pending zero to it, right? That's what shifting to the left does. And this last line, you're going to append what whatever is n n one. So the last bit. 
um, is going to be, um, you're going to take the last bit and then you or it with um, X, which is one zero and a zero or anything would be that. So zero or one is going to be one. So X become one, one, right? And then you repeat the process. So now you don't need that bit. You don't need the last bit. You have one zero one one now. Again, um, um, you shift X to the left by one. So it becomes one, one zero and you do N one to the last bit. So, and then you or it to X that becomes one, one, one and so on. So eventually you will reverse n to become x and since both n and x are integers you just output that integer and you'll get the reverse of the bits okay so that's how bit manipulation works um, i hope you learned something new here and that's all i have for this video all right so i'll see you in the next one